Hello and welcome to class two of the Engineering Dynamics course companion. We're dealing with particles, uh, kinematics of particles, and today we have special cases of one dimensional relative motion and dependent motion. My name is Newt Dog, and this here, he's Wormy, and we are your course companions for dynamics. All right, the bottom line up front for today's class. Um, sometimes we have a special case or special cases where we might have constant velocity and we want to use our fundamental kinematic uh, equations to, uh, to, to write out uh, the relationship between position, velocity, and time uh, in that particular special case when velocity is constant. Um, so we, you're probably familiar with this equation from physics. We want to make sure that we never use these equations when um, they're not appropriate, right? We're only when we're in the special case, when velocity is constant. Also, when uh, we have another special case is when acceleration is constant. And then we can write out um, these uh, equations right here. We could say that velocity and acceleration and time are related in this way. Um, and then we could also say that position, velocity, and time uh, and acceleration are related this way. Um, in this case, the acceleration is constant. Uh, we can also use the wild card from class one and come up with another relationship. And this time we're relating velocity, acceleration, and position where we don't even see time inside that. So that's an interesting um, equation that might come up sometimes. So we want to be on the lookout for when we might need to use that wild card uh, equation. We also, um, in special cases, we're going to deal with relative motion today. This is an important topic uh, because it, when we get to later on, several, many classes from now, when we get to rigid bodies, we actually use this relationship uh, to uh, figure out how motion is happening right in, in in a rigid body but for now we can just think of relative motion um just as you intuitively would think right just like uh cars passing each other uh on the freeway and uh, uh the, what, what the relative speed of one looking at the other um is um and then lastly uh one one of the special topics we have is uh we we often have dependent motion um of the most common uh scenario that we come up with and we will use we call them pulley problems right so that we will see uh, when there's a pulley problem we think of something called the conservation of rope so those are the big ideas that we're dealing with in today's class right so the special cases um right well with the constant velocity what we do is we take our fundamental um uh, velocity equation fundamental kinematic equation we uh separate the thing out just like we did in the last class but you know we have a subscript c here for the, saying the velocity is constant and we integrate this right and we end up with that equation that we saw in the bottom line up front right so um, that's that's totally understandable. And you notice the velocity, constant velocity, came to the outside of the integral because it's a constant, right? Um, now, the special case when acceleration is a constant. Well, let's take a look when acceleration is a, a function of time, right? And it's it's uh, well, in this case, it's not a function of time because it doesn't change with time, so it's not a function of time. So I'll take that back. Um, if you write uh, the uh, fundamental kinematic equation of velocity with respect to time right here and rewrite the thing out. Once again, we put a C under a uh, uh, subscript for the uh, acceleration. Remember here, in the case of constant acceleration, velocity is not constant, right? Of course, uh, that would make sense because the, the, uh, the velocity has to be changing because there is an acceleration, right? But rewriting this out right here and integrating, we get a very similar equation to the one up above, right? Not too much difference here. And we might want to put that, we, we could have even put in here, that there, you know, that that the position was a function of time, but that's okay. Um, but now that we have this equation right here, we could now um, take a look at that velocity fundamental kinematic equation, rewrite it, integrate it, stick that thing back in there, and now check out this is where that other uh, uh, constant acceleration uh, um, uh, equation came from, right? Um, but now this is the, where the wild card comes in. Remember this wild card fundamental kinematic equation. And rewriting this out again, rearranging the thing, and integrating, 
uh, we end up finding that we have this relationship right here. So here is where the, uh, the, the last equation came from. Now, so keeping in mind, this is where it all came from, uh, uh, came from those fundamental kinematic equations. So um, now we will switch over to relative motion. So just describing uh, what relative motion is. So the, the way that we were writing this is with subscripts with a, um, uh, well, let's call it a slash, right? Or a divided sign, right? And we, we refer to this as B with respect to A, right? So we're using A as the reference. So B is the point that we're uh, concentrating on when we write this, right? So um, if we were going to have position, that would be B with respect to A would mean B minus A. We can almost think of that as subscript math, right? Um, and then we would turn the thing around. We would say if we want to know where B is, we take A A and then take the relative position in order to find B. So if we took the time rate change of that relationship right there, right, we would find that we would get this uh, um, equation right here, which actually we could have just used that just like, uh, um, well, let's say wagons, right, because we don't want an anachronism here with the cars, right, I'm Sir Isaac Newton, right, uh, was like 1787 or the, no 1687 sorry 1687 uh, we didn't have cars so we but we had wagons maybe chariot races no that's way back um, and their relative velocity to each other we could do the same argument as up above and then rewrite it and find out what the velocity of B is if we know the velocity of a and then the relative velocity of B with respect to a and then once again you could take the time derivative of that and then find an acceleration, right? So uh, that was just the special case of rectilinear motion, but we could also generalize it uh, and make these vectors as well. Um, it's seemingly simple, but really powerful and useful. And then last topic um, that we're covering in here is dependent motion. And the idea here is that um, if we take this most simple of like pulley scenarios right here, the block A, is dependent on block B. As long as that rope can't stretch, if block A moves a certain amount, black, block B has to move uh, a very similar amount. Uh, I hear dogs barking in the background. And okay, so, uh, what the, the, so we extend that idea and what we do is we create a datum, right? So this is gonna be, the datum is just a reference location right here. In this case, we took a datum here and a datum here and we're measuring um, from those positions. Um, so he, uh, we, we take at each of the, the, the points of interest like A and B and we set up like a coordinate from that datum, right? Measuring from there. We also wanna take uh, and, and take a look at and think about the length of the rope right in here, right? So at first we want to consider all of the rope just so that we can get started with the thing but we'll quickly find um, with how we're going to use that that the uh, parts that remain constant can just be thrown away right but for for the starters we go ahead and we look at the entire length of the thing um, so writing that thing out so i've, I've written, so, so i wrote this out we, we draw the datum right there we define the direction and uh, the position right there, like SA and SB, right? And then we wanna write out an equation for the length of the cable based on those variables, right? And we're gonna lump together all of these things. So you'll see here that I have, uh, okay, so I think I'm referring over here to the one on the left, yes, to start with. I say SA plus SP plus SB right there, right? That's going to be this entire length of the thing, right? Um, but if you know that SP, this is not going to change right there. That, that, whereas SA might get longer and shorter and SB might get longer and shorter right here. But SP, that arc right there, it always stays the same. So you could just bring him over to the side and say that he's a constant, right? And subtract him out. And now if you take the time derivative of this, and noticeably the time derivative of a constant is zero, and you're able to come up with this relationship right here, which gives us this equation, which is really, really simple, right? That uh, the velocity of A, when it's positive, the velocity of B is negative, right? 
makes sense. Or going, and that's with respect to the datums as we've defined uh, them up above. Right. And then also the same thing can be done for the acceleration. So now we have this dependent motion, right? How they're dependent on each other, right? Um, so you want to be careful about the positive and negative signs uh, with this. They're dependent on how you define uh, the datum. And so if there's more than one rope, you'll have more than one equation, right? So uh, this guy over to the side, I should write him out. Let's say that he's going to be S A, right? So that's going to be this part of the rope right here. And then let's say plus um, L P 1 right here. And, and, and actually, um, I think in this type of example, let's say I want this length of rope, we would actually say S A minus H, right? Because we have H right here and our datum was up here. Later we'll say, well, we'll just draw a datum like there instead. Uh, so that we don't have to do that. But this is to try to be f full, fully uh, uh, explanation right here. And then you add LP1 right here. And then uh, something similar right here. We take, um, uh, uh, let's see, I think it's going to be, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just looking to see what they will take. We want th this length right here, right? Um, or what we could do is, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do it out longhand. We'll say SB, right, minus uh, H, right, because we, we are not coming, we don't have that part right there. And then we could also say that's going to be uh, minus L2 right there, right, because uh, this part right here um, is, is not part of this rope right here. Um, and then we could also say that we want to add in LP2 right here, right? So that's going to be this arc right here of the rope. And then uh, we want to add in this part of the rope right here, right? Which is going to be plus SB. And I should, uh, do I need to subtract out? Yeah, subtract out L2. And that's going to be equal to the total length, right? But what you can see here, and we'll do this most of the time, we won't bother writing out all of those things that, uh, let me change the pen color so you could see this easier. That uh, this is a constant, that's a constant, that's a constant, that's a constant, this is a constant, this is a constant. And we can move all those over, over to the other side and add or subtract them depending on what the signs are. And what we find is we're going to have SA plus 2SB is equal to, um, I should write a constant, right? right? And uh, so now if we take uh, the derivatives of those, we have VA plus 2VB is equal to zero. Therefore, VA is equal to negative 2VB. So what we're saying is that um, the uh, velocity of A is going to be the opposite direction of velocity of B. That makes sense. And is going to be twice the, uh, the, the, the velocity, the twice the speed as well of, uh, of B. So that's the idea of the dependent motion. So here is a problem. And it's a little bit more complicated because now there's two cables. So now there's going to be two uh, equations, one equation for each of the cables, right? And for some reason, we're, we, we know this some information here. We say that block A starts from rest. It's important, right? It moves down with a constant acceleration. Okay, somehow we know that. Uh, we might use, later on need to use kinetics to try to establish that. But right for right now, we're dealing with kinematics, so we're just, we just know we're given that information. We say it's a constant acceleration. So we know we can use some of those special cases. Knowing that after five seconds, the velocity of Newt Dog relative to Wormy is eight feet per second downward. Okay, so Newt Dog is going downwards and Wormy is coming upwards like that right there. Uh, so we want to determine the acceleration of the block A, right? 
So we have, um, this is a little bit, it's not quite simple, straightforward, it's simple. So we have to think our way through, write out equations, kind of see uh, uh, where things stand until we can find a path to a solution. It's not that straightforward, okay? So first off, let's write what we know. We could write the velocity of newt dog with respect to wormy, right? So relative to wormy, wormy is n, v n with respect to w is equal to eight feet per second. And let's call it downwards negative, right? Let's just decide that that's gonna be uh, something. Um, we also can write down the uh, kinematic equation right here for a constant uh, acceleration problem, right? And if one thing is if one thing is a constant acceleration, then all these things are linked together. Everything has to be a constant acceleration. So uh, by putting this in right here, right, so it's after five seconds, right? We have time right in there. After five seconds, uh, we have this uh, uh, relative velocity. So now we have a relative acceleration. Right, just by using that simple relationship. Uh, now we want to try to do our little pulley equations, and uh, you can see that I've written all these out. Uh, once again, all these little L's that I've put in here, they're not necessary. I just want to try to uh, kind of guide you. When you can just jump right ahead to uh, taking a look at these uh, uh, at these equations right here. Right, so we could just take a look at S N S A and SW right here. Here's our three reference points, our newt dog, A, and wormy right here. So for rope one, we're gonna say this is the one over the left. So this is this guy, this guy, and this guy, right? Now, you, you know, remember that like th this doesn't matter and none of, none of the arcs around the pulleys matter. Only the parts that are gonna change length matter. So we'll just say that that's going to be SN and then two SA is equal to length one. Um, taking the derivative of those, we find the velocity relationship, which is really just like that previous uh, example that I had. And we also take another derivative, we have the acceleration, right? So once we have this, we have this acceleration, let's call this equation one right here, right? And now for rope two, we do a similar thing. We'll notice here though that, uh, let's see, let's change, uh, let's change colors. Uh, we'll go for green for wormy. Um, we have this rope, this rope, and this rope, and this rope, right? So the entire length of that is going to be 3 times SA plus 3 plus 1, one SW. And that's going to be equal to, I want to think I would have written this length 2, right, to be consistent uh, with up above, right? So if we take the time derivative of that, now we have another equation and then another equation, and we'll rewrite that out right there, right? So we could see how these are related to each other. And if we just have the definition of what um, uh, the acceleration of newt dog with respect to wormy is just the acceleration of newt dog minus the acceleration of wormy. That's just the definition of that statement. Right. So now if we combine these three things together, right, we have um, this relationship right here and we're able to figure out what the acceleration of uh, the, the acceleration of block A and block A, it turns out, is going upwards. Right. So this is if you go back and you were to just read this problem right here. You might get stumped, but if you can see the logic as you go from step to step and just writing out what you know and thinking through and being sort of a private investigator, detective, uh, looking through the thing, looking really closely, and uh, you'll see a pathway after you've written it out and tried the thing. Don't be stumped by the problems and be paralyzed with fear that you're not gonna be able to solve it. You'll just get better at it once you keep working at it and trying the problem, maybe not succeeding at first, but try it again and try it again and you'll get better and better at it and start to make sense and you'll be a, a pro at solving these problems in no time. So for more examples, check out my books. They're available from Morgan and Claypool and if you go down to the uh, description, you'll, feel, you'll find links uh, for them. And make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I'll be creating more and more videos. And um, hopefully uh, you'll find them useful. Thank you and have a great day.